Hi friends, welcome back to another video on practical penmanship. Today we're going to be talking about how to take the whole arm movement drills that we talked about in a previous video and how to apply that to handwriting. So whole arm movement involves using the larger muscles of the arm in order to handwrite. Some of the drills that we talked about in that video were first the compact oval drill, The second drill was the slant drill. Now in this style of writing, no movement comes from the fingers or the wrist, and the majority of the movement comes from the whole arm. So the larger muscles of the arm take care of a majority of the movement. So one way you can begin translating these two drills into actual letters. Example, the push-pull drill. You can begin to create humps for the letter M. The push-pull is also used in letters I and U. So we can combine these two letters. In the Palmer Method handbook on business handwriting, one of the first words he recommends you practice is the word mine. And if small movements with those larger muscles are too difficult, you can write bigger. So for example, so you can really begin to exaggerate some of the movement coming from the larger muscles in the arm. So let's just go through a few letters in the alphabet. Let's do the letter A. There we go. So this is how you can begin to translate some of the whole arm movement into your day-to-day -day handwriting. So back in 2011, I was doing really poorly in school and it seemed no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't pay attention in class. So this began my journey in ambidextrous handwriting. And one of the things that I noticed right out of the gate was that as I began to train the left hand, my right hand seemed to get better on its own. I was told that in penmanship, I should do the opposite of what my right hand does. So mirroring the entire form. So if I write forward, with the right hand, with the left hand, I should choose to write backwards. And so if you just do loops one way across the page like this, Now I'm not implementing the best form here because the angle of the camera and the paper and everything is making this a little bit awkward, but now with the left hand, I'm gonna come back the other direction. And I will continue to do this. And this is one way that you can begin to develop some ambidexterity. And you'll find that the more you do this, every time you go back to the dominant hand, 
the task becomes that much easier. Switching back to the left hand. Hi friends, welcome back to another episode on practical penmanship. Now that we're here at the writing desk, I can offer some suggestions as to the type of content you can fill your daily writing routine with. One of the first things I recommend is that you date every single entry in your journal. This is going to allow for you to keep track of your progress through handwriting, whether or not you're interested in the quality of your handwriting or whether or not you're interested in observing your own thinking patterns. So one of the first things you can do and one of the least intimidating ways to enter and establish a daily handwriting routine is by simply practicing your letters. You can practice your letters of the alphabet or you can practice drills related to handwriting. So I highly recommend that you write in cursive and these whole arm movement drills here are, are a way for you to begin to improve your handwriting but also get the hand moving and help in establishing that daily writing routine. I do recommend that you move on from doing drills and focusing on letters because ultimately the greatest value that comes from handwriting is observing this inner dialogue that takes place within all of us. And we can manifest that dialogue through handwriting, through journal entries, and by simply having a conversation with ourselves through the pen. One thing that I do to get the mind moving and to get the hand moving is to simply begin acknowledging things that I'm grateful for. And with this, you can start off at the most obvious place. And usually I'll start off with, I'm grateful for my hands. I'm grateful for the ability to write. I'm grateful to have a variety of pens to choose from. I'm grateful for having been taught cursive. I'm grateful that I can articulate myself through the English language. And in this way, you can begin to observe the type of thoughts and the type of things that you are actually grateful for. And there's this great quote by Kevin Trudeau and he says, the more you're grateful, the more you'll be given to be grateful for. And so I highly recommend that through your journal entries, you express gratitude of some kind. And it could be for the most obvious things. I'm grateful that I have a bed to sleep in. I'm grateful that I have two feet to stand on. And in that way, you can move on to some of the more profound things that you are truly grateful for and some of the simple things that you may take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. Another way to maintain your daily writing routine is by simply writing about what's happened in your life. And in this way, we can better understand our own opinions and feelings about what's happening in our day-to-day -day lives. And with that clarity, we can move forward with more confidence and greater decisiveness. Another suggestion I have is to copy down quotes that you think are important. I think it is very important for each of us to find individuals who either have what we want or are great teachers of subjects that we're interested in. And in that way, we can take quotes from them and keep them in our journals so that if we ever need some guidance, we can always look back to our journal entries and read these quotes and fuel inspiration.
I also highly recommend that when you're doing journal entries that you try to articulate yourself in grammatically correct English as much as possible. Handwriting is the most unique exercise in that it involves kinesthetic movement and cognitive thinking. And in this way, we can begin to, one, discover our inner writer voice, that inner voice that we have that narrates, and two, we can begin to develop how we choose to speak in our day-to-day -day lives. Today we're going to be talking about what sort of writing instrument should you choose? Advantages, disadvantages to each one. So the first one we're going to start with is a pencil. Now, right off the bat, one of the disadvantages to a pencil in compared to a pen is that you have to sharpen it. And the life of a pencil is potentially short because of this, right? Eventually you will have to sharpen it all down and you will no longer have a pencil. Now, one of the advantages to having a pencil is that you can easily erase the graphite if needed. So that's one of the advantages of the pencil. And this line template here is the new Creative Brain Training line template that I've made. It has slant lines for your forward cursive as well as your mirror image cursive. You can get one of these at my website for free. Pencils are a favorite amongst my students because they can erase if they make a mistake. Now we're seeing some of the disadvantages of the writing with a pencil. There's a very line width between here and here. See, I changed the rotation of my pencil and all of a sudden I got a new line width. I think it was right there. Well, new line width somewhere in there. The next, we're going to go in order of, of commonality. The next one is the ballpoint pen. I have a couple different ballpoint pens here. And I also have this very beautiful Mont Blanc ballpoint. Very beautiful pen. Uh, it's my father's, and he allowed me to use it for this video. And this is a little fancier, even fancier than the Mont Blanc here. There you go, look at that. Custom is a ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen has its advantages and also disadvantages. Right off the bat, you can see this lighter line right there. You can expect a lot of variation in ballpoint pens. Here we have the Mont Blanc pen, so let's go ahead and see what this writing sample is like. I have not written with this pen before. And it seems like it is the same as any other ballpoint pen. Gel pens are quite nice, a little bit more consistent than a ballpoint pen. This is a very fine point gel pen. And it's a real workhorse. This pen gets the job done. I have never had any problems with this pen. Once the cap is off, you can see how beautiful this pen really is. Looks like I'm running a little bit low on ink on this pen. It also has an ink window here, so if you shine it through the light, you can see the ink level quite well. Another advantage to this pen 
and it is refillable. It has its own proprietary filling system. There's a seam right here. You can't even see it. It's right here where my nail is. And you can twist off the back end here. Dip it in a jar of ink. Um, as you untwist, the piston goes down. And as you twist it closed, the piston pulls up. So as you're twisting it closed and the nib is submerged in the ink, the piston will suck the ink up in through the nib and into the body of the pen. Very beautiful pen, very nice to write with. Now, one thing that you don't get with the Lamy that you get with the Delta is this beautiful design. It also has its own proprietary filling system on the inside. It's got this blind cap. It doesn't have a spring-loaded clip. The Lamy has a spring-loaded clip. So, you really don't need to spend the extra money. This right here is more of a novelty piece. You have it because of the beauty. Very beautiful pen. The detail on this is absolutely phenomenal. There you go. Hi friends, welcome back to another episode on practical penmanship. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the long-term perspective and why you need to be patient. This is something that in our generation can be frustrating for people because we're so used to that instantaneous result. When I first started back in 2012, and I started handwriting because I was encouraged by one of my mentors to take on this task of handwriting for the sake of my own mental health and my own uh, cognitive functioning. Now, the beautiful thing about penmanship is that your growth is being documented. And this is one of the things that I love most about penmanship. So I just want to share with you the first entry in my journal from Back in 2012, I still remember the date. It was May 28th, uh, 2012. It's something that I like to look back to because the way that I was thinking, the way that I was talking, and the way that I was writing, the quality of the handwriting has changed tremendously over that time. So it reminds me of where I was when I first started. And whenever I'm down about anything in general, it is a way for me to know that that is only temporary. Let's see here. So we're getting close. Day one is somewhere around here. I think it, oh, I think I might have taken day one out and I've made scans of it. But this was a logo that I had created back in the day. And I, I did it for a 2D art design class. And then later I came back after I had done some handwriting for a couple years and I decided to fill all the negative space around it. And then this was a, a draft for an artwork I made using different um, different line styles. So we have cross hatching here and uh, straight line versus implied line and thick line and thin line. And then later I came back and I filled all the negative space again with with handwriting. But this this right here is day two. There you go, you see day two. And look at my handwriting. Look at my handwriting, it's so poor here. This is my left hand, by the way. Left-handed handwriting. So I, I don't know what these say and I haven't pre-read any of them, so I'm not gonna show you in more detail because I don't wanna reveal myself to be a weirdo. Like I, like I am. But here you can see here on this page here, this is my right-handed handwriting from back in, this is June 17th, 2012. So you can see what my handwriting used to look like. And so six years later, just about six years later, you're seeing in the other videos what my handwriting looks like today. So just to, to gain some perspective on this whole um, growth process. Now that I've made a mess of all my papers on the floor. This is essentially what I wanna share with you. Penmanship requires patience. And 
by being patient and by being devoted to the singular task, you're going to find that this creates patience for different sorts of scenarios as well.